If I was to ask you to picture the Renault Megane, could you do it? Now, the Megane's been very, very popular. Um, I mean, they've sold over 1.3 million of the things across Europe in 26 years and four generations of the car. But despite the fact it's been such a big volume seller for Renault, and despite the fact that the Renault Sport ones have probably been some of the most lauded and praised hot hatches that the motoring press has ever come across, can you actually picture the last Renault Megane? Now you see, a lot of that can be attributed to the fact that we now have a love of crossovers and SUVs. That tends to be our default kind of family cars these days. But listen to this fact. 40% of the UK market is still that C segment, that five door family hatchback that plenty of us still know and love. And even in this electrified age, manufacturers are still giving us those five door hatchbacks in that C segment. Volkswagen with the ID3, the Nissan Leaf, uh, the Cupra Born, MG's new four, and next year we're going to see the new Peugeot 308 and Vauxhall Astra get an electrified drivetrain. Now Renault have joined the fray and given us an electric Megane. And trust me, you're not going to forget this one in a hurry. Welcome to Wadston Manor. Welcome to this week's road test of the new Renault Megane E-Tech. And as always, welcome to Auto EV. Now, before we go on to this week's road test review of the new Renault Megane E-Tech, it is of course that time where I ask you to make sure that you're subscribed to the Auto EV channel. And once you've done that, if you press the little bell button, then you'll get notified of when our next video goes live. Once you've watched the video, if you like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and leave us some comments down below, good or bad. Let us know your thoughts on the car or on the channel. Let us know how we're doing. Now, if you're a manufacturer and you're introducing electric powertrain into your range there's sort of two routes that you can go down you can go down the route of Stellantis group the artist formerly known as PSA so the owners of Vauxhall, Peugeot or Citroen and you can bring out a product like the Citroen C4 the Peugeot 308 or the Vauxhall Astra and give your customers the choice of drivetrain so petrol diesel electric same car but petrol engine diesel engine or electric drivetrain that's it or you can go down the route of Volkswagen, which gave us a separate car to the Golf. So in other words, the ID3. So if you wanted a petrol or diesel, you bought a Golf. If you wanted to go electric, it was a separate model and it was the ID3. And Renault did a sort of similar thing way back when they launched a Zoe, almost 10 years ago now, because it was sort of the same size as a Clio. But you didn't get an electric Clio. Clio was electric, uh, sorry, petrol or diesel. And if you wanted electric, you bought a Zoe. And they've sort of done the same thing with the Megane. Well, I say that, but not in the UK. You see, here's the thing. They've taken the rather brave, some may say bold decision, to do away with the petrol and diesel engine Megane in the UK and just offer this one. So in other words, if you want a Megane now, it's, all, it's only going to be the electric choice that you have. Now, is that future-proofing the Megane? Or is it a bit of a commercial disaster? Well, there's only one way that we're going to find out. And that's by putting it through the road test that actual car buyers trust to deliver a truthful verdict, the auto EV one. So let's crack on and see what we think of the new Renault Megane. Now, styling. What a great looking car this is. An absolute cracker straight out the box as far as I'm concerned. Let me go through some of the details with you. At first glance, you're going to think this is one of those crossover SUVs. It isn't really. And Renault don't want you to think about it like that at all. It's almost a bit like the Polestar 2 that's got that slightly raised kind of ride height that gives you that impression that it might be some style of crossover. But believe it or not, the new Megane is actually lower than a Renault Zoe and it's shorter than a Ford Focus. So there you go. Details abound on this car. The front, well, they start with the new Renault logo, the new diamond logo, which invokes kind of memories of the one from yonks ago, from the 60s and 70s. Massive big Renault logo on the front there. I love that, but it's not the charging flap. Now, I wasn't very sure about whether or not that should have been the charging flap like they've got in the Zoe. And I think, you know, from the point of view of practicality, it would have been handy if it was. But then there's the flip side. 
If you have a little nudge at a set of traffic lights or someone backs into the car in the supermarket, that's your charging port knackered. So they've put it on the side, out of harm's way. So I kind of get that reasoning. LED lights, look at these slim, beautiful LED headlights. That's them in there, and that's standard across the range in the Megan that's coming. I love this. And then you've got this kind of chrome strip that just comes across, and as I say, it's dissected by that big, bold logo. The sculpted bonnet is something to behold. I love these big scallops out of it and the way that the line just curves round here. It's a stunning looking thing in the flesh. And then down below, you've got your cooling down here, right down underneath the number plate um, that the air is fed in through. Now, depending on the spec that you get, and we'll go through specs in the pricing section, you can have a thing called an F1 blade. It's a silly name, but effectively this part here is a kind of gold, the kind of Renault gold uh, colour, um, this section here to invoke memories of the Formula One cars. That's a load of guff as far as I'm concerned, and I wouldn't bother with it. But there you go. I think that is a cracking looking front end, but the rest of it is just as good. It's in the side profile where you really do get a bit confused about where the Megane fits in, because I say it's got that kind of stance of a small crossover, but as I say, trust me, it isn't. As I say, it's actually lower than the Zoe and shorter than the Focus. Um, they previewed the car in the 2020 Megane e Vision concept car, and it has pretty much made it onto the roads untouched from there, which I really applaud them for. Like the Polestar 2, as I said, you've got that slightly kind of raised right height with this black kind of wheel arch trim around it. So that kind of does give you the impression um, that it is a sort of like, as I say, a kind of mini SUV type of car. But here's the clever trick. It's a really squared off car. The distance from the middle of this wheel to the end of the front overhang is almost identical from the middle of that wheel to the end of the rear overhang with a 2.7 meter wheelbase in between, which makes the interior vast in terms of its class. And as I say, that pushing the wheels to the edge is part of the fact that it sits on a dedicated EV platform. It's the CMF EV platform that it shares with its alliance partner Nissan with its new area, which is, oddly enough, a crossover, but it's a scalable platform, so it can be changed a lot to suit the car that it's going on. Other details on the side, well, let's have a look. I see you've got your black contrast wheel arch trims, you've got this nice little bit of black trim down the bottom that's nice and practical in case you bang the door against something when you open it. Talking of the doors, you get these flush handles in the front that spring out, so they're nice and chunky and grab them, but the rear ones are actually integrated into this rear pillar. Now, they were on the Zoe as well, but they're even better hidden than this one. The whole pillar seems to move out as you open that. really like that. Um, there's 20 inch alloy wheels available on the mid spec and the top level trim and it's 18 inch on the standard base car but as I say look at that side profile it just squat and purposeful it looks phenomenal and the back looks even better because again like the front it's squat squared off and purposeful looks brilliant big roof spoiler obviously that helps with aerodynamics but it does mean you've got quite a shallow rear window. I mean, that's quite small, but again, talk about that when we're driving it. Rear lights, love these rear lights. It's difficult to see. I'll put up a little bit of B-roll there, but you just this intricate little filaments in these lights that just give a little bit of, a bit of interest and a beautiful bit of detailing. Again, the big Renault logo, um, new logo. Megan, a broider across. The E's got a slightly different sort of finish to it to make you realise it is electric. And then you've just got like a little button there to open the boot as well. Low set number plate, bit of black cladding. Obviously no fakery in terms of the exhaust or diffuser and some sensors down the bottom. It's handsome and it's square jawed. It's like the automotive David Coulthard disc car. And I think it's probably the best looking car in its class. But what do you think? As always, let us know in the comments down below. That, ladies and gentlemen, is 440 litres of boot space. And that is vastly bigger than the 380 litres you get with the Citroen EC4 and the 385 litres you get with the Volkswagen ID3. You can extend it by flipping down that 6040 rear bench and that will take the total capacity up to 1,332 litres. 
And now I don't have my suitcases with me today because I say we're on we're on the UK launch of the car. And if I brought four suitcases along, I think people would just think I'm weird and I was maybe moving in. So I don't have them. But trust me when I say it, they'll fit. They will all fit in there. You've got an additional 32 litres underneath the boot floor for a little bit of storage for the cable. So that's good as well. There's nothing up at the front because it's front mounted motor. So there's nothing under the bonnet. The only downside I would say with this boot is there's quite a deep sill to kind of get your cases or your whatever you've got in the boot out. That's the only thing. It's quite a, it's quite a drop from this load point entry down to the boot floor. But that is going to be more than enough space for any family, I would suggest. Now, rear seat space. It's okay. Um, it's the only thing, I, I mean, this seat's set up for myself, and as everyone knows, I'm 5'7, 5'8. Um, and as I say, it's a dedicated EV platform, and it seems like quite a long wheelbase, 2.7 metres. If you think about it, um, the Hyundai Ionic 5 is nearly 3 metres, so it's just below that. Um, but there's not a lot of foot room. In fact, I'm kind of struggling to get my feet underneath the rear seat. That's the only thing. Now, I'm going to come on to talk about the battery later in terms of its capacity. But interestingly, it's the thinnest battery that's available. It's 110 millimetres thick. So actually, it's not a huge amount of battery that's actually underneath there in terms of its physical size. It's actually 40% smaller than the equivalent Zoe battery. So they've done it hard for it. So that makes that a little bit surprising, I have to say. Um, the legroom's okay. The legroom's fine for me. Headroom's okay too. It feels a little bit dark in here with the kind of dark headlining that, that's inside the car, but it's all right. Um, my head's starting to get a little bit close to this rear section here. And this window line is quite high. So if you've got little kiddies in the back, uh, as I say, they're going to feel quite kind of closed in, I would suggest. Talking of kiddies, the Isofix points, nice and easily accessible. So the covers just flip up and they clip in there. Um, it is a flat floor, so you can get a third person in the centre. But again, I would suggest if it's three full-size adults, they're going to feel a little bit tighter. So this seat isn't ideal, but it's okay. Um, there's two USB-C connection points there, so that's good. Storage is limited to just the map pockets on the backs of the seats and the door bins. There's no flip down armrest here with bottle holders. And I think that's a bit of an omission because the door bins, they're all right, but my daughter wouldn't get her water bottle in there. So it's okay. I think in terms of what Renault have done is they've maybe concentrated a bit more space up front. It's fine back here. But I would say, oddly, the ID3 kind of feels a bit better in the back than this car does. Now, as I say, I think they've concentrated most of the space up here, which is kind of fine by me in some respects. It depends, obviously, on your needs. Um, and But it's this interior, this upfront cabin, which I have to say is probably... Well, I think it's the best in its class. I think it knocks the ID3 into an absolute cocked hat on many different levels, not just for the design, but for the usability and the quality as well, which we'll get on to. Now, you've got two screens across here. So you've got your driver information display right in dead set ahead in front of you, 12.3-inch, uh, that is, and you've either got a 12-inch or a 9-inch display depending on the trim level that you go for. You've got some physical buttons as well. So your heating and ventilation controls, um, and these are unique to the Megane. These aren't borrowed from other Renaults, and they feel nice and quality. These little aluminium switches with the kind of knurled um, little finger grips in them that work really, really well. And depending obviously on what you want, you can just up and down fan speed or whatever, and that works really well. Nice, again, physical kind of buttons, or a nice kind of sound to them. The screen, obviously, is touch screen. You get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard as well, obviously. Um, but the system works off a Google operating system. So Google Maps is what the the, um, the, uh, sort of like the standard navigation system works in. And I like that, and I think it works really, really well because manufacturers, you know, they're not as up-to-date um, by the time you get a car to market as, say, some of the tech companies are. So to employ the tech from the tech company, such as Google um, or whoever, to actually install it in here. I think that works really well because 
the car comes with over the air software update so it'll always be the latest generation that you have just the same as you have on your phone so i think that works really well you can configure it obviously to have um, you can go to the google play store and you can configure it to have different apps and widgets so your spotify your music that can be there uh, or as i say you can play it through um, your apple carplay or android auto talking of your mobile phones you've got this nice wireless charging pad that's up there so you can just lay your phone down in there and um, you've got wireless charging um, which is nice and easy in there or your phone can actually just sit down in there which is quite nice i like that or there there's a couple of little places you can put it depending obviously on what you want so i like that um driving position driving position is really good seats are comfortable a huge amount of recyclable materials are used in the interior of the Megane. I mean, obviously, everyone's talking of sustainability these days, and Renault are going all out um, to show that they are as good, if not better, than everyone else. So again, depending, obviously, on the model you go for, you can have recycled kind of fabric on the seats and this kind of pleather-style material on the side. The top trim level does get leather as standard. So if you like your cows, don't buy that one. Uh, you get this material on top of the dash as well, so it matches the seats, and I love that. There's different use of material. And on this car I've got, it's got these Alcantara trim bits in the door, but they also do a really natty kind of wood trim that goes in there and sweeps across the top of the dash. And it's a really thin piece of wood that's then laser etched onto cotton or something to give a really different kind of look, and it looks phenomenal. But I like this Alcantara that comes up around the top there. I do like that. Quality, as I say, is superb, absolutely superb. When you think of Renault, maybe sometimes from the 70s, uh, 60s and 70s, and you think they're quite utilitarian, this is nothing utilitarian. This, as I say, knocks the ID3 into a cocked hat as far as I'm concerned with quality. Everything feels solid and it's going to last. You get a nice kind of piece of metal up there. You know, as I say, the actual graphics look sensational. You know, you can swap the view as well. Um, in terms of obviously what you want on here so if you've got you know your maps there and things you press this view button um, that can then bring it across into this display as well that you've got here and then you can just concentrate on infotainment your know, Spotify whatever over there so your navigations in your line of sight there's a lot you can change with this uh, dashboard and configure how you want the buttons look touch sensitive but they're not they're actually a physical button you've got to press which I like the only downside in terms of the driver environment for me is that Renault have seen fit to put the, the drive trans, the transmission lever as a column stock on the right hand side. So you've actually got three column stocks on your right hand side. So you've got a transmission lever, you've got your wipers, and then you've got your traditional Renault media controls for the radio that they've been doing for decades now. That's quite a lot going on there. I'd quite like to maybe have seen them put buttons for the transmission lever or move the radio controls onto the steering wheel. I don't quite like all of that. And there's a few times I've been driving, you know, you, you go for the wipers and actually you're hitting the, the, the transmission lever or vice versa. So that's the only downside there for me. The wheel's got a slightly kind of squared off um, kind of feel to it. They say it's a nod to their F1 heritage. That's a load of marketing guff as far as I'm concerned. But actually, it's quite nice to hold. It's got a nice size. It's got a nice feel to it. And I say it feels quality. You've got the driver... Uh, sorry, the... the um, the what am I talking? The drive mode button is now this little one here that like you get on the key and high and ice, which is nice. Or you can actually do voice operation for that, which we'll see even without driving. So that's good. Storage is massive. It's completely different to the back. You've got this vast storage area here. It's not an open floor. So you've got this huge big kind of door bin there. You've got cup holders in here, which you can get obviously your drinks cans in there. There's another kind of bin which is quite deep in there and then you've got the door bins down the side which are lined with the carpet as well which is excellent stops things rattling around glove box as well good decent enough kind of glove box in there and as I see your wireless charging for your mobile up there so interior how do we think it well as I say I think it's best in class I think it's nicer than the Citroen EC4 and I do like the interior of the EC4 I think there's more information on display. I think it's vastly superior to the ID3's um, woeful, stupid infotainment system. 
and I think, as I say, in terms of quality, you kind of scored a almost Audi quality in terms of fit and finish. It's really good, really very good. Now, as I said earlier, the styling feature, it'd be nice to have the charging flap at the front, but there's a practical reason perhaps for not doing it. So it's here on this side, on the near side of the car here. There you go, standard CCS. Now, if you've watched, let's say, shall we say, a lesser YouTube channel um, who did the first drives of the Megane a little while back, they'll have told you that the car's gonna come with two battery options. So you're gonna sit there and go, well, what can you tell is completely different, Brian? Well, I am because the UK is only going to get one battery size, and that's the larger one, the 60 kilowatt hour battery. The 40 kilowatt hour lead-in battery is not going to be available in the UK at the moment the car goes on sale. So, letchfind.com, Johnny Smith. Anyway, charging speeds, 130 kilowatts it will take, meaning you can go from zero to 80% in one hour, 15 minutes. Now that seems quite long, but bear in mind that's from absolute flat to 80%. Most people say, or give us a 10 to 80% charge. Um, of more use um, from one of those rapid chargers is the fact you can add 186 miles to the car in just 30 minutes. So that's maybe the way to think about it. If you're commuting or you've got a long trip, 186 miles in just 30 minutes. Um, if you can get one of those chargers capable of delivering 130 kilowatts. If you're charging the battery up from flat at home and you've got a seven kilowatt home wall box, then it's nine hours and 15 minutes. But if you've got three phase electricity and you've got a more powerful um, 11 kilowatt charger, then you can knock three hours off that at six hours, 15. So how does the new Megane drive? <sighs> Drives really well. As well as the decision to just have one battery size, that means you also get just the one motor, and that is a 217 brake horsepower motor. Now that gives a not to 60 time of around about seven and a half seconds. So about bang on for you know a car with that sort of level of power. But it's not just it's not just the power and the performance of the Megane, it's how it goes about just being a good car. Now I talk a lot about refinement in my road test reviews because I'm a man of a certain age and I, I do like a little bit of peace and quiet in a car and I've always sort of like said you know cars like the Kia, Nero EV, um, the Citroen EC4 as another one that I always praise very highly and now we have another car to add to that and that is the new Megane. Renault have done wonders with this car, how it feels to drive in terms of its its comfort, uh, its quietness, its refinement in terms of its drivetrain. And they've done some very, very clever things because of that. What they've done is, first of all, they have got a thing going on, there's some ridiculous amount of patents for this car, and they've got something called the cocoon effect technology or something like that. Basically what it means is, on top of the battery of the car, they have put a layer of sound deadening. Now you might think, well doesn't everybody? No, not everyone does. And Renault have. It's effectively like putting a duvet over your stereo speakers. All the noise that's coming out is now deadened and damped and, and, and you know, all the, like the, the, the noise that's coming up from the, the road or the tires or the suspension is being sort of like deadened and dampened by that sort of like cocoon effect technology. And you can really tell. Then to go a little stage further than that, then you've got extra lining in the doors. So all the surfaces that there are, you've got all sort of like sound deadening material across the whole interior of the car. And it's just eerily quiet. I really, really like it. So that's the first thing. That's the first big tick in the Megane's box, as far as I'm concerned. The second tick is the way that it actually drives. So if you do want to get a little, get a little bit of a hustle on, the way this car deals with it is, well, brilliant, to be honest with you. And again, they've been quite clever with that. The battery is the thinnest battery that you can have at 110 millimetres thick. Now, what does that actually mean, Brian? Well, the benefit of that, because being an ex-car salesman, what we have to give is features and benefits. 
So the feature is a battery that's only 110 millimeters thick. And the benefit of that is a lower center of gravity. This has a lower center of gravity than a combustion engined Megan. It's 11 centimeters lower than a combustion engine Megan and way lower than something like their own Zoe. And that means your turning, your lack of body roll is just brilliant. It's not flat, you can still feel a little bit of body roll, but I like that. I like that because it doesn't feel unnatural then. As you go into a bend, you can feel the car kind of move and you know what you're doing, so you're aware of your, and dare I suggest, the car's limitations. And as a driver, that's what you want. You want to know where the limitations are. And the Megane talks to you. It talks to you better than some other electric cars that are out there. The other thing they've done is this steering. Now, whilst the wheel is a little bit of a kind of odd shape, it's this kind of slightly kind of quartic style steering wheel. But actually, it's quite nice to hold. And you don't have to move around it so much because they've quickened up the steering. Um, so you've got a steering ratio of 12 to 1, which means that your turning and your actual wheel movement is a lot less than it would be in other cars. So you approach a bend, and as soon as you turn the wheel, you've got a response. It's not overly light, that's not what I mean. It's got a meatiness to it but it's just the way the car, the quickness in which it responds by that quicker steering rack, that's the difference. And that is really, really trick in terms of making this car work. When I said before about the styling, they were saying that this was gonna be the Renault Sport Megane. You can see where that Renault Sport kind of DNA is filtered down into something like this, because this drives superbly. Oh, look at that. Apex is there. Gosh, that was pen sharp. Just a little roll of the wrist. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Brakes. Let's talk about the brakes just briefly as well because you've got brake regeneration um, on the car. There's four levels I seem to remember. So you can have it completely off, so you just coast, or you can kind of ramp it up through three different levels up to like the most aggressive. So you've got off levels one, two, and three. And as you approach around a bit, you lift off, it whoa, on level three, it is pretty aggressive. So in town, that's pretty much a one pedal driving car, which is nice. But because it's now mounted up on paddles on the steering wheel, rather than like the Zoe's gear shift selector where you go into B, it means you can actually play with that as you drive and dare I say, almost let the car behave like an internal combustion engine car and use engine brake as you're coming up to a roundabout or a bend. Like that a lot. The brakes themselves, if you are using them, the pedal's got a nice feel to it. It's nicely weighted in terms of the rest of the control, so it has an even weight between the, say, like the, um, the accelerator pedal and the brake. They feel they feel pretty much evenly balanced and again I like that not one's not too light the other one's not too dead you've got a nice balance between them um, in terms of the drive modes you've got obviously drive modes that you can scroll through and that's done by this button on the steering wheel here it's called multi-sense don't know why but basically if you go you've got eco where obviously it kind of shuts things down and you you know, it just give, ekes out the la very, very last of the, um, the the miles that you can get out of the car. Um, you've got Sport, which does that, which I like. You know, again, you can feel the difference. Um, you've also got Perso, which I'm assuming means personal, where you can set up various different elements to, to be how you want it. And then you've got Comfort, which again just kind of balances everything out. It's the more, it's most kind of evenly balanced of all of them. But even in comfort mode, your actual um, your actual response from the controls is good. As I say, it, it, it trumps an ID3. This absolutely trumps an ID3. The way it drives. This is an excellent car. This really is. The ride quality. Let's talk about that, the ride quality, because this is on 20 inch alloy wheels, this particular trim level that I've got. And I was kind of expecting it 
to be worse than it is. Now, I still think that the Citroen EC4 is better on ride comfort, but it's not the massive gulf that you would think, especially when you realise, say, this thing's on 20-inch alloys. So it's not, you know, a massive difference. We're talking of a percentile of difference, and it tends to be... It tends to be its primary ride where you notice it most. So those little, those little kind of ridges and you know potholes. That's where you kind of feel. It can just feel the wheel. You can just feel it working. Whereas in the Citroen, you don't. You don't feel any of that. On bigger undulations, its secondary ride is as good as the EC4s, I would say. So it's just that kind of low end where you'd find it maybe lacking a little bit. But that's it. This is a good, good car. In fact, no. This is a great car. I like this. I like this a lot. Renault have done a brilliant job with this. Brilliant job. The other thing that's very... I'm sat here at a set of traffic lights, so apologies. But the other thing I really like about it, as I say, it's got a Google operating system. Um, and I like Google operating systems. I like the, the Google Assistant. I really like it. I get on with it very, very well partly because it recognises my accent. But you don't need to use this button to change the drive modes. Hey Google, select sport mode. Okay, setting the car to the sport driving mode. Like that. I mean, not that there was anything wrong with pressing a button, but that's quite cool. My only thing, my only complaint with this environment is I'm just not keen on this transmission being on this transmission selector being on this stock up here as I say there's three column stocks on this side alone so you know if you just go to flick your wipers on it's kind of easy just to catch the transmission lever with your finger rather than the wiper down there or as I say press the end you know the thing for the um try and push that to try and change the volume because you've got the, the volume control for the radio down there on this third stock. I think that could have been better executed, personally, from a practical point of view. But it's a small point. You soon get used to it. But, yeah, that's the only thing I can complain about in terms of the driver environment. The rest of it is superb. The comfort is excellent. The seats hold you in just the right place. They've got enough... Um, length in the squab for me they've got just the right amount of side support they've got a nice position for the head restraint I can't fault it I can't fault the way the car makes you feel as a driver in terms of how nice it is to sort of get comfortable in this car I can see me doing a long journey in this car very easily very easily if you think about the way that the car makes you feel as a driver in terms of the way it causes you and comforts you allied to brilliant refinement, allied to a good, achievable and efficient range, I could quite happily drive, you know, many hundreds of miles in this, quite happily. I like this car. I do like it. Now, if there's a downside to not having that small battery option in the UK, it's price. I think Renault have been very brave with this. I'm going to say that now because they say this is the new Megane. They don't have the, the petrol diesel engine one. So if you want a Megane, if you want a five door family hatchback from Renault, it's electric and it's this. And you do have to pay a little bit for that privilege. Now the range is going to start, they've got a very simple range, there's three models in it, that's it. It starts with the Equilibre at £35,500, which is a lot of money. But bear in mind, that is a 60 kilowatt hour battery and it does come well equipped to standard. You get things like 18 inch alloy wheels, uh, heated front seats, heated steering wheel, Apple Android, uh, sorry, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all of that's kind of standard on the car, plus over 20 driver assistance systems as well. So it is very well equipped and Renault say they're not doing any options, they're not putting any packs available to you, so that's the price you pay for that one. 
you jump up to the mid-level trim, which is this one is the Techno, and that's £38,500. And that goes up to the 20-inch alloy wheels. Um, you get some more driver assistance aids. Um, you get privacy glass. Um, you get slightly nicer bits and pieces on it as well. Or you go the whole hog at £39,995 for the rather lazily titled launch edition car, which gets all of that plus a nine-speaker Harman card and audio system and those silly gold F1 blade things that they say at the front. So let's think about this for a second. On the face of it, at first glance, it seems that Renault have maybe priced themselves a little bit out of the market. Especially when you consider that MG are bringing one of its biggest competitors for this car, the MG4, out at well under the £30,000 bracket. But you get the big battery standard, which means you've got a good range and it's very efficient as well. So in terms of your overall running costs, you shouldn't be charging up quite as much. And you will get that sort of range out of the car, hopefully, because Renault have always been very good at delivering what they say. In terms of its quality, it's way above what a Volkswagen ID3 is, which is a similarly priced and sized car. So you've got a way up. Yes, they've been brave, but yes, they have pushed the Megane slightly up market. And there is a part of me that thinks it's not Renault that's expensive, it's MG that's quite good value for money. So if you do want a Megane, I think it's pretty much where you'd expect it to be in terms of its closest competitor, which is the ID3. Which brings me neatly on to the competition section. And as I say, well, we've pretty much mentioned the cars that this car is going to be competing with. And it is Volkswagen's ID3, Cupra's Born, uh, the new MG4, which we've yet to drive, but hopefully we are soon. And obviously next year, as I say, you've got um, Peugeot bringing out the new 308 with the electric drivetrain and Vauxhall's Astra with an electric drivetrain. Bear in mind, you've also got a current Stellantis product with that electric drivetrain, and that's the Citroen EC4. So here's what we like and what we don't like about the new Renault Megane E-Tech. We like its design. It's great performance. It's superb chassis dynamics. It's refinement. It's practicality and its range and efficiency. We don't like the busy area around about the steering column, the lack of a smaller battery option in the UK, meaning a higher entry price point. So, Renault's new Megane, what do we think? Well, I can answer that very, very easily. It's brilliant. Now, Renault have been very, very brave with this car, and You've got to applaud them for that, taking that bravery. Remember, they got the Zoe out over 10 years ago and they haven't really given us anything sort of like mainstream electric since then. And you could be forgiven for thinking they're maybe being a little bit lazy. But when they've taken their time and given us something so complete and so good as this new Megane, then I have to applaud them for it. Now, yes, it's expensive and yes, they've taken that brave decision to put it into a price point. That is a lot more expensive than another new car that, as I say, we're about to see, the MG4. And there's part of you that says, well, why is it worth the extra money? Well, I haven't driven the MG4 yet, so I've got to be a little bit careful what I say. But if you were to take an equivalent specification of Volkswagen ID3 and put the spec on it that this car has and all the rest of it, then you'd be at a similar price point. And trust me when I say this. This is way better than an ID3. In fact, until I drive the MG4, I'm happy to stand here and tell you this is the best car in its class. In that C sector, all electric hatches, and we've still got to drive the Astra that's coming next year and the Peugeot 308 that's coming next year. But let's be honest, they're going to be spun from piston engine drivetrains. They don't have that sort of like benefit of being that ground up EV that the Megane has. And Renault have played an absolute blinder with this car. Yes, it's expensive, but trust me when I tell you this, it's worth every single penny. Thank you for watching another episode of Auto EV. As always, please remember to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. And once you've done that, press the bell button down below because then that way you'll be notified of when our next video goes live. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and leave us some comments. Do you agree with me? Do you think the Megane is too expensive? Or have you driven it? Do you think there's other cars out there that are better than it? Let us know. 
Now remember, we're also across all social media platforms as well. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. So go and give us a follow there because every little bit helps us. And if you've enjoyed this video and you're new to AutoEV and you think, what are we about? Well, waste your afternoon away on our YouTube channel because there's well over 100 videos now that include road test reviews, used car reviews, electric icons, van reviews, and now even motorbike reviews with our guest presenter, Charlie Boorman. So there's loads there to waste your afternoon away with. All that remains for me to say is thank you ever so much for watching once again. I'll see you soon. So, you've watched our video. It's now my job to tell you to like and subscribe and press the little bell button to receive notification of when our next video is uploaded.